Hi everyone, this is Sam Gabriel. I'm excited to talk to you today about uh, Vault Secure Introduction in our third video in the series talking about end-to-end -end infrastructure and application deployment, how we're automating the entire process, and how it's very important to securely introduce secrets into your environment. So that's today's topic. Let's dive right in. Okay, so we uh, we talked about two topics in the last couple of videos. The first one, we talked about Vault Azure Secrets Engine. Uh, we are using Azure Cloud to deploy our application. And to be able to do that, we're using Terraform to build the VMs. To build the VMs, obviously, we need to access Azure. So we need the credentials for Azure. So in the first video, we talked about using vault to dynamically generate credentials for Azure and then those credentials can be uh, used with Terraform to build the VMs that we need to build. All this is automated and uh, Jenkins is um, really the brains behind the operation and running everything for us. Which takes us to the second video that we talked about and that is Jenkins setup. That's when we set up Jenkins uh, using Terraform, using uh, Vault, of course, to create credentials in Azure and also uh, using Ansible as well. So if you want to go back, I'll reference the two videos in the description of this video. I highly encourage you to go back and take a look at those two videos before uh, you start uh, watching this video. Now, in this video, we're going to talk about Vault Secure Introduction, what that means, what Secret Zero is all about, how do we introduce the, 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 those secrets into the environment. And then in the final video, we're going to talk about the entire pipeline and how finally we get the application up and running. So let's get started. The agenda for today, uh, the intro that we just went through. Uh, we're going to go over our goal, so a recap of the goal that we've discussed in the previous two videos, uh, the topics that uh, we're learning, and the topics to learn for today's video, Vault Secure Introduction, Secret Zero, what is that all about? Uh, then we're going to obviously go and talk about a demo and show you how we're doing all these things, and then finally, a conclusion for today's video. The overall goal, uh, in the first video, we talked about uh, how we have a Vault admin that needs to configure Vault to get credentials from Azure. Then therefore, that then the DevOps engineer would uh, use to uh, build a Jenkins machine with those credentials in Azure. And uh, building the Jenkins machine required a few things, uh, an image built by Packer stored in Azure, and then Terraform builds uh, that VM with, with uh, Ansible configuring the VM. Uh, we're running a Docker container just because it's a bit easier to uh, to install everything. So we're using Ansible to pull down the image and run the container. And now we have a Jenkins machine that's ready for all our builds. In today's video, we focus on this oval shaped kind of orange color uh, layer here where we're having Jenkins uh, work with Vault to introduce Secret Zero into our into our environment. So that's secure introduction that we'll talk about. So the topics to learn: uh, one, two, three, four. We discussed already in the previous two videos. And five, six is what we'll talk about today. And seven, eight, nine, and ten in the next video. So for today, as I mentioned earlier, Vault secure introduction. We'll also talk about Vault App Role, what that is all about, and the Vault Agent and how that helps us in uh, in our application. Okay, so Secure Introduction and Secret Zero. What is that? What does that mean? Uh, so what is Secret Zero? If you're familiar with a password manager, such as LastPass or let's say uh, 1Password, uh, you're familiar with the idea that there's a master password that you need to unlock the uh, the vault within LastPass where you're storing all your actual secrets. So in the same idea that you have vault, HashiCorp vault, and 
obviously we want to centralize all our secrets and put them into HashiCorp Vault. But then this raises the question, well, you need to access Vault, right? So where do you store the Vault secret or the, or the Vault token to be able to access all the secrets inside of Vault? So really that is secret zero. How do you get that initial Vault token to be able to access the secrets stored inside of Vault? So it's really the Vault authentication method or token that we need to get into Vault. What is secure introduction? Well, simply it's the introduction of secret zero into uh, our environment. Now, secure introduction goals, uh, you know, we, we need a trusted entity or an orchestrator to provide or to introduce the secrets into, uh, into the environment, right? In, in a secure way. So what are the goals that we're, um, we're, we need in this regard? We have unique credentials that we need for each, each instance. Uh, we don't want to hard code anything into our application, right? We want to make sure that the credentials are not long lived. So they uh, need to have short TTLs or time to live and that they're distributed securely. Uh, you also want to detect any kind of unauthorized access. Somebody tried to get that, that uh, token or that secret, you want to know about it. And you also want to limit the exposure if that uh, gets disclosed. Okay, so I, uh, I'm borrowing some of the slides that uh, uh, Josh Wolfer put together. And uh, so shout out to him. Thank you for that. And uh, while I'm at it, also a shout out to Kausar and also to Gilberto from HashiCorp and that, uh, you know, these folks were instrumental in, uh, you know, working with me in understanding secure, uh, secure introduction and uh, secret zero and what are what the best practices are. So again, shout out to those two folks. Thank you very much for going through and uh, working with me on that. Now, uh, the secure introduction steps, these are generic steps that we'll talk about. Uh, you can apply them in different environments, different settings. We're gonna see an example in today's video. Uh, so that's one example, but these steps are generic in nature that you can apply anywhere. So first step, you need to create a vault identity or a role for your application. And then you need a trusted orchestrator that requests a wrapped vault token. And we'll talk about what a wrapped vault token is in just a bit, but just know that it's not the actual token, the actual secret. Uh, then you need that trusted orchestrator to deliver that wrapped token to the actual application. The application unwraps the token and the application now uses that new token to access various uh, secrets or secret paths stored inside of Vault. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at how this works with some uh, illustrations. So here you can see, if we go back, you can see the color coding is important. Uh, you can see the Vault identity or the, the uh, Vault token with the actual unwrapped or real token and then the trusted orchestrator is in green, and then the wrapped vault token is in red. So we have a trusted orchestrator. This could be anything. This could be, in our case, Jenkins. It could be, uh, uh, could be Terraform, could be Ansible. But in our case, we're using uh, Jenkins as our trusted orchestrator. And what it will do, it's going to uh, talk to Vault, and it has its own green token there. So it has access into Vault. It is trusted to a certain degree. And we'll see that in our example, we actually gave it very, very limited permissions. And the only permission is to wrap a secret ID. And then once uh, you know Vault checks the policy that is associated with that green token, knows exactly what that trusted orchestrator is allowed to do, it will, uh, what it will do is it will create this wrap token based on what the orchestrator is actually doing and it will store it in something called a cubby hole okay so now the the uh, now vault comes back and gives the trusted orchestrator this red token here which is a wrap token it's not the actual original token which is the yellow token that got generated so this is your uh, secret that you want to be careful not to give out so we're giving actually a wrap token which is the red one. And that gets delivered by the orchestrator to the application, as you can see there. The application in turn unwraps 
this red token and obtains the actual yellow token that it requires to connect to vault. At that point, because it's the token has been unwrapped, cubbyhole disappears and you take away the, the token from there, so it's no longer there. Okay, so let's uh, see what happens in case a bad actor or a hacker tries to uh, retrieve that token. Let's see this hacker, you know, somehow intercepts or finds the unwrapped token and tries to get it, get to Vault to unwrap that token. So Vault naturally will respond back with the actual real token, the yellow token or the orange token here. And Cubbyhole disappears, right, with the token. Now the application is going to go and try to unwrap that token as it would normally try. But what will happen is Vault will respond back with a 400 response code, which results in an error. And now this should be auditable or you should send out a notification you know at this point saying okay the application could not unwrap this token there's someone who's who actually unwrapped this token beforehand and at that point an investigation needs to take place so this is really the the point in our goals where we're talking about we need to know if somebody actually unwrapped the token so that's pretty much it when it comes to secure introduction in uh, in general terms now let's take a look at uh, two places in my application uh, where I use secure introduction. The first one is for the Jenkins pipelines, and the second one is for the actual web blog application that, uh, that we're going to run. We'll see why we're doing this for, for the Jenkins pipeline uh, in just a bit. So let's just follow along with me, if you don't mind, uh, this, and I'll explain how the workflow go, uh, works as we go along. All right, so we start off with a Vault admin, and the Vault admin needs to uh, do a few things inside of Vault that's done manually, and it's only done once, and from that point forward, everything's automated. Okay, so the Vault admin first needs to create app roles, and an app role is an authentication method within, uh, within Vault. So the Vault admin creates app roles for uh, for Jenkins, the Jenkins node, I'm going to make a little bit of a distinction between the Jenkins node and the Jenkins pipeline. Uh, so the Jenkins node itself, we're creating an app role for that and also another app role for the pipelines that will run within, within Jenkins. Also associated with those app roles are policies as well. Once that's complete, the Vault admin now will insert, insert the app role authentication credentials into the Jenkins node. And we're using the Jenkins Vault plugin inside there. Uh, you don't have to, but I found it easy to use. And you can put it in there. Um, and we'll see in the demo how that's done. Uh, just a side note here, which is very important. The Jenkins node is a trusted entity, or I should say a semi-trusted entity. Um, the policy associated with that app role only allows the Jenkins node to write a wrap secret ID and nothing else. So an app role consists of two things, a role ID and a secret ID. Similar to a username and a password for, for humans, an app role is used for machines. Okay, and this is all inspired by this talk. I'll reference this also in the description of this video. But basically, just remember that what we're putting inside of the Jenkins node is very, very limited permissions um, to access Vault just to allow the Jenkins node to create a wrapped uh, secret ID. So that secret ID is the password that's going to be used for the app role for the pipeline. Uh, next, the Vault admin will also deliver a role ID for the pipeline, um, and that will be evident when we look at the Jenkins file. So that also is delivered. So like I mentioned before, the app role is already generated in step one. So you'll get your role ID, you can get your role ID and, and secret ID, but the Vault admin only puts the role ID in here in the pipeline. No secret is delivered to the pipeline. From that point on, the Jenkins node now creates a wrapped secret ID for the pipeline. So remember, it's wrapped. It's not the actual secret ID. 
And then the pipeline is going to unwrap that secret ID and uh, it's going to log into Vault via the app role for the pipeline. Now, what kind of permissions does the pipeline have? Uh, these are specific to the application that's going to uh, enable or going to create. So first of all, it's going to have a TFC token. TFC stands for Terraform Cloud. So you're going to have a token, a Terraform Cloud token to be able to uh, log into Terraform Cloud and run Terraform builds. It's only also going to have permissions for dynamic Azure credentials via the Vault Azure Secrets Engine. It needs those credentials to access Azure, to uh, have ta uh, Terraform access Azure and build VMs in Azure. So it needs that kind of permission. It also has the ability to wrap a secret ID for the Vault agent that we'll talk about in just a little bit that's going to be used with the web blog application. And then finally, it needs to get the MongoDB root credentials that are stored inside of Vault to bootstrap, bootstrap MongoDB that's going to be used for our application. All right, so step number six, the pipeline now is going to retrieve the TFC token and generate dynamic Azure credentials. And now Terraform um, is going to, or the pipeline, the Jenkins pipeline is going to call on Terraform to build my application VMs. Terraform is going to go to Azure and build the, the VMs using the credentials that were taken from Vault. And that's pretty much it. So let's go back just to give you a quick overview. Um, it looks a little bit complicated and uh, it really isn't once you look at it step by step, but it really delivers the um, credentials or the, it introduces you know the credentials into the pipeline very securely. Uh, you might argue and say, well, Sam, why don't we just put inside the vault, uh, the Jenkins vault plugin, just the role ID and the secret ID and we're done. Um, obviously you can do that, but that's less, a lot less secure because at that point, you know, you're going to have to uh, figure out a way to rotate the, the, the secrets for the Jenkins node. I do understand that it, it is considered a trusted entity, but this is a more secure way of doing things where we're only allowing this Jenkins node to wrap uh, secret IDs and that's it. And then the pipeline, uh, you know, is, gets the the secret ID straight from the node or the wrap secret ID straight from the node and it unwraps it directly through Vault. Now, the second uh, place where I'm using secure introduction with Vault is actually with the web blog app itself. So once again, once again, I have the Vault admin and uh, he or she, they need to put the app role or create an app role for web blog with some policies in Vault. So uh, just to make sure we're, we're all on the same page, we have three app roles that got generated. Uh, one that's used by the Jenkins node. The second one will be used by the pipeline. The third one is going to be used by the Vault agent that's going to introduce the Vault token into the web blog app. So this is where we're generating that third app role for the web blog app with policies, of course. And then the pipeline is going to create a role ID and a wrapped secret ID for the vault agent. Um, so it has that permission or those permissions for the application VM. Then the pipeline or Jenkins pipeline is going to call on Ansible to configure the uh, web blog app VMs and pass the vault agent app role credentials. Okay, so we have um, the VMs have already been created in the previous slide that I showed by Terraform. This is just the configuration phase. So Ansible now is going to configure the web blog application VMs, both the Python Flask VM and also the MongoDB VM. Uh, so a note here as well, while we're configuring the web blog app VMs, is that it really includes a bunch of things that Ansible is doing. It's going to install the dependency libraries for the application, the Python libraries that it needs for the application to run. It's going to download and install the Vault agent. 
and we'll talk about what the vault agent does in just a few um, seconds here it will also download console because we're going to use console connect for the service mesh to have the python app talk to the mongo database it will also download the envoy binaries which is used also in connection with console connect for the service mesh because remember we're not running this in kubernetes we're not running this in any kind of orchestrator or nomad this is purely legacy vms and we're showing how we're going to actually run a service mesh straight on vms we're also running services uh, via system d and docker so ansible is going to run system d and run docker bring up the services basically and then joining the weblog app and the mongo to the service mesh so we're going to join those two services to the service mesh so they can speak with each other so that's what ansible is doing step number five we have ansible now securely introducing the wrapped secret id for the app role for vault agent and that will start the vault agent and then from that point on the vault agent actually deletes the file where the secret id is stored right when it boots up so it's going to get the wrapped secret id it's gonna log into vault and auto authenticate from that point forward and of course delete the the file with the secret id uh, that i mentioned that or i should say the wrapped secret id so the point of vault agent i didn't mention before is that it's think of it as a helper for the application to implement the logic to uh, log into vault uh, auto renew the the tokens or the authentication tokens so you don't have to write that logic into your application it's a very nice helper function that uh, that, that runs uh, beside your application and it does all that for you so that's where we're introducing that secret ID so that the vault agent can log into vault using app role that we talked about here and from that point forward the vault agent will drop the vault token that got generated after it logged in so in step seven it's putting a vault token inside of a sync sync think of it as just a file in the file system here that then my application can pick up that vault token and log into vault and do whatever it needs to do uh, from that point forward my application now is vault aware it understands uh, how to connect with vault it uses the vault api but of course it needs a vault token to authenticate into vault and this is how we've delivered the vault token all the way straight to our application so the application can use it and log into vault so that is secret zero being delivered straight to the applications very, very securely, as you can see. And it's all automated throughout the whole uh, entire process. Now, if your application is not vault aware and you're not building it to be vault aware, you can do things like deliver secrets straight into the sync here. And the application just needs to know where to pick it, pick that from. That'll be straight from the sync file and you can go from there. But my application is already vault aware i'm using it for a number of things i'm encrypting uh, my web blog posts content so i'm using encryption as a service straight from vault so it makes sense to uh, to have it talk to straight to the vault api and become vault aware all right so hopefully this has been uh, somewhat clear i know again it's a number of steps but once you build this once your application is pretty secure you're delivering the secret securely uh, secret zero i should say and then from that point forward you implement the same strategy for all your applications moving forward and in all of this the only manual process is in the very beginning when the vault admin delivers uh, you know the app roles and so on as i mentioned before okay for the demo today here are the steps that we're going to go through i'm going to run the entire pipeline takes about six to seven minutes so we're gonna run that and while it's running I'm gonna walk you through the vault admin tasks that are required then we're gonna look at the Jenkins vault plugin and the app role credentials uh, see how you know how to use that where you install or where you put the credentials and uh, then the junk Jenkins build itself what that looks like and I walk through the Jenkins file where all the magic happens that's where you know the brains of everything happens then we'll go over 
uh, the vault agent how it works and we'll explain that using the ansible playbook that's that's being used and then we'll see i'll show you how the uh, agent the vault agent uh, removes the wrap secret id file once it once it uses it for the first time and uh, that's it it gets deleted um, and that's pretty much it that's uh, uh, quite a few things that we're going to go through today but again uh, we'll go and walk through it step by step to make things easier for you all right so let's go ahead and jump right into the demo all right so uh, we're right here in visual studio code and i just uh, made a couple of changes here on commenting the uh, terraform uh, step to destroy because i was just destroying the infrastructure prior to recording this video so now that's done uh, i'm gonna go ahead and commit this so let's build everything let's commit and i'm gonna push this to uh, github and once this gets pushed to github it will automatically through a webhook uh, run the jenkins build so let's push make sure everything's pushed and don't worry about this file, we'll, we will cover it um, in great detail, if not completely in this video, but definitely in the next video we'll go through that. Um, it's the exact same uh, GitHub repo that, uh, that I showed in the previous two videos, so everything is in one place for you, makes things simpler. So let's go ahead and take a look at, uh, at Jenkins. Oh, there you go, it's actually building already, so that's good. Um, while that takes place, let's go ahead and see. So I'm showing you my um, Azure console here. As you can see, we only have the Jenkins node running here in uh, this particular resource group. And what will happen is the uh, the Jenkins job is going to run and build three nodes for us. One is going to be for the application, uh, the uh, Python application. The other one is going to be for the Mongo database. And the third one is going to be for consoles to run as a server. Uh, so one will run as console server and the other two will be console clients. So while this takes place, this takes about six to seven minutes, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, I, what I'll do is I'm going to go over the uh, vault admin tasks that take place. I, and then we'll come back and explain what's going on here. So let's go and take a look at those in just one second. Um, let me bring this over here. So what needs to happen is a couple of things. Let me just go to this piece. Now this, if you recall a while ago, this is where I have the, uh, the GitHub repo for uh, vault for building vaults so you need a vault admin to run uh, this piece here where uh, you can see the Jenkins secure introduction this is where we're creating the app roles that I mentioned earlier in the slides so here we have a, a pipeline policy that I'm creating a Jenkins policy and an app role for the Jenkins node remember we talked about there's a Jenkins node and there's a Jenkins pipeline so the Jenkins node and the Jenkins pipeline here. This is the Jenkins app role. And you can see that uh, secret ID number of uses is zero. It's unlimited, uh, which is fine. Remember the policy itself uh, is what gives it permissions. And if we look at the policy, as I mentioned earlier, the only thing you can do is write a secret ID for the pipeline app role. Okay, that's all it can do. And it has to have a wrapping TTL between 100 seconds and 300 seconds. We'll see that we're running at 200 seconds. Anything out of this will result in an error. So we've really limited the permissions that we're giving to the Jenkins node. Um, these are the April permissions that we're gonna put in the Vault Jenkins plugin. So if we go back uh, over here, back to our main.tf file uh, where we're configuring vault as a vault admin uh, you can see the other authentication backend that we're creating is pipeline and here is the backend uh, role for for the pipeline 
The secret ID number of uses is one, so it's only only be used once, and that's it. Uh, the secret ID TTL time to live for the secret ID, the token TTL, uh, so five minutes and and 1800 seconds here, and the pipeline policy associated here looks like this. Uh, let's see. So that's the Jenkins policy. Here's the pipeline policy. Uh, what it's allowed to do is a few things. So it can uh, read from the Azure path to get the credentials, as I mentioned earlier, for Terraform to configure things on Azure. So this is this will use the Dynamic Secrets engine uh, from from Azure, or the Azure Secrets engine. It can also read the Weblog app role role ID. We're going to need that. It needs to uh, write uh, a wrapped secret ID for the weblog app role, which is going to be used with the vault agent. Uh, again, you give it 100 seconds to about 1,000 seconds. And it has the ability to read the data that's stored in this particular path. This is a key value store or key value path, uh, key value secrets engine, I, can, I should say. It has the ability to read, so this is the TFC token to uh, to use to configure uh, or to run Terraform in, in Terraform Cloud. And it also finally has access to MongoDB to read the secret for the root uh, password that we're going to use with MongoDB to uh, bootstrap MongoDB. And uh, finally, the auth backend here, app role. It's just at the path app role. And this one is the one going to be used with the weblog application, basically through the vault agent to deliver the token to the sync, where it will be uh, taken up by the Python Flask app. Um, so that's basically it. It's, it's very straightforward, as you can see, just a few lines of code here in Terraform. It will get you up and running and get everything uh, from a vault admin perspective uh, configured. The web blog policy here, you've seen this before. It does a few things. You can see it can read from uh, the this particular path in MongoDB. Um, it can do, uh, we're doing dynamic database secrets with MongoDB, so it has that capability. Uh, this one was when I was doing the Nomad uh, video a while back. Uh, you can see the Azure role here to, um, uh, for, for actually, this one was from a previous video. This one is the one we're using in this uh, video series. And then the transit path, this is for the encryption as a service or the transit secrets engine. Okay, so that's it from a policy perspective and from a vault admin configuration. Uh, as, as I mentioned before in previous videos, I, I really like the, uh, the Terraform vault provider or the vault Terraform provider, I should say. To, uh, to configure Vault. Uh, it's a very clean way of doing that. Uh, so the next thing up on our demo steps here is to go and show the Jenkins Vault plugin. Okay, so let's go back over here. I see it's still working. So let's go to our dashboard and manage Jenkins. Um, so you need to install, if you go to plugins, see what's available here, um, installed. And it's called the Vault, HashiCorp Vault plugin. That's the one you need to install. You can see the documentation here. There are a number of ways to use it, but I'm using the app role method of authentication. And if we go back to look at the credentials, so you need to go to manage credentials and uh, go here. So I'm creating global credentials and uh, you just add a credentials or add credentials here. You can see um, uh, here you put your role ID and then you put that secret ID that, uh, that you would you'd have created and uh, the path is Jenkins uh, and just give it an ID and a description and that's it. 
Remember again, when you're putting this in, this has a very, very limited scope. It doesn't have a lot of permissions. It can only wrap a secret ID, that's it. So I'm fine doing that here. Um, remember earlier I said you could actually just put a role ID and a secret ID here that uh, that can do all the, what the pipeline is doing. But again, it's not as secure because then, uh, you know, if anybody has access to this or sees this, then they have access to Vault and a lot more permissions that, uh, that are allowed there. Okay, so that's that piece. Um, now, in addition to this, there was one thing I wanted to also make sure that we cover. Um, now, a lot of this is going to be in the README file. I'm going to write a, a blog post covering all of this to, to make things a little bit more uh, consumable and easy. But here you can see at the bottom, um, these are the two commands that you need to, to create or uh, to run using the Vault Admin's own uh, authentication method within Vault. So you need to read the role ID and the secret ID that I mentioned before for the Jenkins node. So basically when you run these two commands, you're going to come back or you're going to get a role ID and a secret ID. Um, that was look something like this. This is what it's going to look like. But once you have them, then this is what you're going to put right in here. And once you put it in here, then you're you're good to go with that step. Um, okay, so that's that. Now let's go back and see the Jenkins build, see how far we've gone. Uh, where are we at? Okay, so this took a little bit longer than I expected. Uh, but we're past the Terraform step. And now we're working on Ansible to build the actual VMs. So why don't we go ahead and uh, kind of, I'm going to read through these quickly and then we'll go into the Jenkins file itself and, uh, and look at it. So the way this is working is we have a few stages within the Jenkins pipeline. The first stage is that the Jenkins node creates a wrap secret ID for the pipeline. And then we're unwrapping that secret ID. The pipeline gets the login token with the role ID and the unwrapped secret ID. Uh, then logging into Vault with the pipeline app role, creating Azure credentials for Terraform to provision the application VM. Uh, we're retrieving the TFC token from Vault and creating the .terraform RC file that's required to be able to um, run the Terraform commands or the Terraform file. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, so this is used to authenticate into TFC. And then this is the Terraform build phase. This is where Terraform is going to provision. Uh, actually, this should read three VMs. It's going to provision three VMs, one for the uh, Python application, one for the Mongo database, and then finally one for the console server. All this is done in Azure. And here we're creating a role ID and a wrapped secret ID for the vault agent that I talked about earlier. And then Ansible is going to go ahead and configure everything for us and deliver this role ID and secret ID to the vault agent. Okay, let's go and take a look at our uh, Jenkins file. Okay. Uh, so in the Jenkins file, this is very important, defining this role ID. This is the role ID for the pipeline and needs to be inserted by a Vault admin, right? So this is one of the manual steps that needs to be ha to happen in the beginning, as I mentioned earlier. Then define your Vault address, and then we start the different steps. I like to put timestamps, so you can put your timestamps here. here. <clears throat> now the credentials here, this is how you're grabbing the credentials from the Vault uh, plugin, the Jenkins Vault plugin. <clears throat> um, okay. And so here's, here are the, the different stages that we talked about. The wrap secret ID. So we're running a script here. Remember we talked about the wrap TTL 200, uh, or it has to be between 100 seconds and 300 seconds, so we're running 200 seconds at this particular path for the pipeline. So we're creating the wrap secret ID for the pipeline. 
And then in this stage, we're unwrapping the secret ID. As you can see, we're unwrapping that. And over here, we're logging into um, to Vault using the role ID and the secret ID. In this case, this is the unwrapped secret ID that we've got from this stage. And over here, we're logging into Vault with the pipelines app role. So using the actual Vault login token. And, and at this point now, we're starting to create the Azure credentials for Terraform. So you can see different uh, <clears throat> shell commands. So we're reading the Azure credentials dynamically at this path, storing it into this temp file, azurecreds.json. And from here, you can see we're using JQ to um, get the data, uh, get the client ID and the secret ID um, for accessing Azure. And we're writing those, so we're grabbing those from the temp file and we're writing those into um, the this particular auto.tfvars file so that Terraform can access Azure once again. Um, that's the way we're doing it. So we're doing it into these two files that will get aggregated. Um, if we go into the Terraform folder here, it's gonna look something like this. Uh, obviously, I've run this a couple of times uh, manually directly from my laptop or from my machine here, but this, remember, this is happening on the Jenkins node itself. So Jenkins is running the Terraform CLI, as you recall from the previous video. We have the Terraform binary installed along with the bin uh, vault binary, along with the Ansible binary inside of the container hosting Jenkins. And in there, uh, we're creating these two tfvars files that, uh, you know, any auto.tfvars files get taken into consideration as variables files. So that's how we're getting the credentials for accessing Azure into Terraform. And uh, then we're retrieving the TFC token, and this is how we're creating the .terraform RC file to authenticate into TFC. So here we're building this file. Um, as you can see right here. Uh, so this is the file that we're building and we're running this vault command to grab the TFC token directly from vault. Uh, this stage is provisioning the two applications, uh, two app VMs in Azure, I should say, plus console server VM, right? So it's actually provisioning three VMs um, so we're, we're just going into that proper uh, folder and then we're running Terraform in it, formatting everything, validating everything, Terraform apply. Now this method of accessing Terraform Cloud, this is called the CLI um, driven workflow as opposed to VCS driven workflow where uh, VCS or GitHub would be tied into Terraform Cloud directly. In this case, Jenkins is really running everything for us. So it's a CLI driven workflow and we're not tying directly to the version control system. And here all we're doing at this point is actually grabbing the Terraform output. Uh, can, uh, we have, remember we have three VMs that we're configuring. So we're grabbing uh, the different VMs fully qualified domain names and we're storing all of this directly into the ansible inventory file so that from that point on ansible can take on those uh, ips or fully qualified domains and ssh into these different machines to continue with the configuration management of those vms and this is really a best practice when it comes to a tying terraform with ansible um, in your flow Terraform is very good at provisioning VMs, uh, but it's not best practice to use the provisioners within Terraform to do configuration management because it doesn't keep state of that. Whereas uh, Ansible does a great job with configuration management. So that's how we're passing on the baton from Terraform over to Ansible using Jenkins. 
in this stage, this is where we're creating a role ID and a wrapped secret ID for the vault agent that's going to be used with the app VM. So you can see here we're reading. Uh, by the way, if you haven't, if you don't know what this is, when you put the flag field, it's actually very good when it comes to uh, automation because it's if you're, if you're familiar with vault commands, if you don't put this, what it will do is if you don't put this, it's going to come back with a human readable kind of format, but it doesn't really help me because it uh, I really want to grab in this case just the role ID, right? So I want to make sure that what comes back, the output that comes back from this command is only the role ID that I then can write to this particular file uh, that we'll be using uh, in the next stage. So here we're getting the role ID for the vault agent that's going to be used by the vault agent. We're also uh, getting the wrapped token. So we're wrapping here at 900 seconds, which seems to be a good number. Um, from a TTL perspective to allow Ansible enough time to build the vault agent and get it ready. Um, and then I'm dumping this into this particular file as well. Okay, so that's the role ID and the wrap secret ID that's going to live um, locally in on the Jenkins node. And then finally, this is the stage where Ansible is going to configure the uh, different VMs to, uh, to have the entire application work. Right, so it's going to run a an Ansible playbook, and in that Ansible playbook, we're going to see how. Um, actually, let's do it right now. <clears throat> so what happened is going to run this Ansible playbook, which is right here. And there are a number of things in this Ansible playbook. I'm not going to cover everything because we'll probably do that in the next uh, video. But what I want to focus on is really the step. Uh, where it comes to the vault agent. So let's go in here and take a look. Um, so installing console. Um, yeah, it's down down here. Installing the vault binary, obviously, because we need vault agent. Uh, so that needs the vault binary. And let's see, create the vault configuration directory, copy vault config to the server. Uh, here we go. Copy the role ID for the vault agent. So we're copying it from the file that we created with Jenkins and we're copying it into a destination file inside the VM hosting the vault agent. Doing the same thing with the wrap secret ID. Um, we're copying the vault service. We're running system. Well, system D is going to run a service to bring up vault or the vault agent. As you can see here, it's starting the vault service. <coughs> And the rest of this has to do with the application and uh, and so on. But this is really where Ansible is copying the, the file inside a location inside of the vault agent. The vault agent is going to grab that secret ID or the wrapped secret ID, log into vault, delete the location. So this temp weblog wrap secret ID will get deleted. And at that point, uh, it's very secure at this point. It will deliver the authentication token in into a specific um, location. And let's take a look at where that is. So here's my vault agent configuration. <clears throat> so once again, you specify the vault address where it's going to talk to vault. And uh, I'm using the April method for auto authentication. And uh, once again, inside here is the actual role ID file path, secret ID file path that we'll use. Uh, here's the command that says remove secret ID file after reading. So that is set to true. <coughs> Excuse me. And then here, the secret ID response wrapping path, right? We're saying this is where uh, you know, we're doing where you can deliver the actual secret ID, but that's not really the point. We really want to deliver a wrapped secret ID in here, right? So that's what we're doing here. And the sync file, if you remember, we talked about the sync. The sync file is where the vault token is going to finally live, where my Python application will grab the uh, vault token from and use that to authenticate within vault. So that's delivering secret zero. Secret zero will live in here. And um, now what we'll do is let's take a look and see how far we've gotten with the build. 
and then I want to go and log into my application or SSH into here and take a look at this location and also make sure that the actual wrapped secret ID file got deleted. Okay, so let's go ahead and do these two things. Looks like we've successfully deployed uh, the application. So if I go back in here and just take a look, <clears throat> there we go. We have three VMs, weblog 01, 02, 03. 03 is the console server, 01 is the Python app, and 02 is the um, 02 is the uh, MongoDB VM. Okay, so let's go ahead and grab my. Um, actually, let's go do a couple things. Make sure it's working. So I think I have the DNS name already saved in here. There we go. So our our web blog is up and running. Um, I have to register first. Let's give it a email uh, we've done this multiple times so I just need to save the same thing new blog uh, there you go so I'm interacting with the database I'm creating blogs I can create uh, a post um, you know so the application is working fine everything is great and now if we go into this guy here let me copy this and we're going to um, ssh in here let's see uh, okay All right, so I'm inside the machine. Now let's go into here. Okay, so this is where if I do this. Maybe it'll look a little bit better. Uh, this is where I have the vault token and I have the web blog role ID. If you notice, if we go back in here, the temp web blog role ID I have, the temp vault token I have, the temp web blog wrap secret ID has disappeared. It's no longer uh, there because, as, as I said, it will remove it once it reads it. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look and see uh, and see what happens here. Cat vault. I'm okay to show you this vault token. It's it's going to disappear after the video is done, so that's fine. Uh, but basically, this is where my application now can go in and grab this vault token. That's the secret zero. From then on, it's uh, it's good to go. Um, and that is pretty much all I've got. Um, as you can see, we've covered quite a lot of things in this video. But mainly, the main thing is to talk about secure introduction with vault and introducing secret zero into the environment how that is done um, automatically as we saw in uh, as we saw here how Jenkins obviously is doing all the heavy lifting is just a manual process in the beginning first time to introduce uh, or to have the vault admin create the uh, the necessary configuration within vault to make all this magic happen and from that point forward you have a robust secure implementation uh, where you know your your secret your first secret secret zero the vault uh, token is delivered securely in your environment so hopefully this video has been helpful and uh, looking forward to uh, going through the last video of this series uh, so i will see you soon bye